This video talks about a type of experiment commonly done in biomedical research called a cell cycle analysis. And in this type of experiment, the researchers would like to know the cells that they have uh, in a dish and they're experimenting with, let's say adding a drug, um, are these cells normally progressing through the cell cycle, G1, S, G2, M, or are they arrested um, at a certain phase of the cell cycle? And we'll talk later in the course about how um, cells can arrest in G1 or they can arrest in G2M. There are checkpoints that tell the cell uh, is it, it might be okay to go from G1 into S or the cell has to stop in G1 because something is wrong. Or cells can go into G2 and are, want to maybe go through M but they may have to stop or arrest because something is wrong. So um, to do a cell cycle analysis, uh, researchers um, perform an experiment which allows them to determine the percentage of cells in a dish that are in each of these cell cycle phases. So you can have all these cells in the dish. Some percentage of them will be in G1, some percent will be going through S phase, some percentage will have gone through S phase, completed it, and are now in G2, and another percentage will actually be going through mitosis. So the way this experiment works is that a researcher takes a plate of cells and adds a DNA binding dye to the cells. And there are a variety of different dyes that one could use to do this experiment. But suffice it to say, the DNA incorporates into the, uh, uh, the dye incorporates into the DNA of the cells. The more dye that incorporates to the cells, the more the cells glow or fluoresce. And you'll see that in the next slide. But So if you look at just this regular old cell in G1, it typically has a diploid amount of DNA. So if we're talking about a normal human diploid cell, we're talking about 46 um, chromosomes. And so adding the dye to cells that are in G1, you get this brightness or glowingness uh, that is uh, comparable to the amount of dye in a cell that has 46 chromosomes. If cells are in S phase, they have more than um, 46 chromosomes. They are in the process of replicating, duplicating their chromosomes. And so maybe they're a you know, quarter way through or halfway through. These cells will incorporate more dye, um, and they're going to glow a little more brightly, and we'll be able to see that in the next uh, slide. If cells have completed G2 or are in the process of going through uh, the phases of mitosis, they have... Um, duplicated their chromosomes, so they are double diploid. So they, uh, instead of having 46 uh, chromosomes, they most likely have 92 chromosomes. Uh, and so they incorporate double the amount of dye that is present in a G1 cell. So how do we determine, um, out of all the cells we have in our dishes, what percentage of them are in G1, G S, G2, and M? So this is what the uh, data output is going to look like in, like in this experiment. So here's a plate of cells. So the dye is added to them, and the more DNA in a cell, the more dye that's soaked into it. And so these cells are taken out, and they're shot with a laser, and they're going to uh, emit the, some amount of light based on the amount of dye that they have taken up. So cells... Um, um, are sent through this machine and basically the glowingness, the brightness, the fluorescence is measured for each and every cell. And so on the x-axis of this figure you'll see dye intensity. Um, you go 0 to um, this figure 1023. Um, the more you go, the higher on the x-axis, the brighter the intensity of the signal from the cell, which represents the amount of dye in the cell which represents the amount of DNA in the cell. So DNA content um, increases as you go along the x-axis. The y-axis refers to the number of cells that are at that intensity. So let's say, for example, you examine 10,000 cells via the, the cell cycle assay. Well, the cells that are in diploids, uh, in the G1 state, they will fluoresce with a certain intensity, and they would um, you would count them in this area here. So this peak in the area under the peak represents the number or percentage of cells that are in G1. It's also G0 because you're not actually sure if these cells are dividing or they have differentiated. But typically we're talking about cells 
that are dividing in a dish, and so you would say that they're in G1. Um, if cells are in S phase, they have more DNA, so they would be shifted over to the right in terms of their signal intensity, since they have soaked up more dye, since they have more DNA, so they would be more intense uh, in terms of their intensities, and you'd see them over to the right. And so this peak, it's not really a peak, it's really more of like a little trough there, but that's where you find cells that are in S phase. And um, cells that are in, have completed uh, S phase, now they have double the amount of DNA, and so they're either in G2 or they're about to undergo mitosis, and so we call this the G2M peak. And again, it's the area under this peak that you can say represents the uh, number of cells or percentage of cells that are in G2M. Um, there's uh, this area below the G1 peak which um, would have less than diploid amount of DNA. What could that be? Um, those could be apoptotic cells, so cells that are starting to fragment and the DNA is starting to be destroyed, and that's what happens in an apoptotic cell, um, they would soak up less dye. And so um, sometimes researchers also use this type of experiment to look at apoptotic cells. So we call this the sub-G1 peak. If we look at some real data for, for some papers, you can see that um, researchers typically take cells and maybe treat them with different conditions, different dyes, different time courses, uh, knocking out genes, adding genes, and try to look at the effect on the cell cycle. So, for example, in these um, cells that have been treated, um, a certain percentage of those cells, 58% of them, are in G1 phase. Now, this is compared to the control cells, where only 41% of them were in G1 phase. So, whatever treatment has been uh, added to the cells, meant more of them are now in the G1 phase. And that usually um, represents a cell cycle arrest in the G1 phase. And we'll talk about checkpoints, G1 to S checkpoints, later in the course. Um, so whatever has happened in that cell, a checkpoint has been triggered. And so most cells, many of them, have now decided to stop in G1 phase and not progress into S phase. You can also compare the G2M and S peaks in the treated cell versus untreated cells. And you can see in the treated in the untreated cells, the parental ones, about 50% of the cells are going through S or G2 or M, so they're going through the cell cycle. Whereas in the treatment, you're now down to 20, 35% of cells are going through the cell cycle. So something has triggered cells to um, more congregate in G1. So this is known as a cell cycle arrest. Um, it's not as significant as some other treatments you'll see later in the course. Um, there are, usually looking at the sub-G1 peak, you can try to determine the amount of apoptosis happening. In this treatment, there's not a significant increase in the sub-G1 peak, so there's not a significant increase in apoptosis using this treatment. If you look on the right, there's another graphical representation of the data that's typically um, generated on the left. So sometimes they show you the raw data, on the left with these peaks, and these peaks represent the number of cells. Uh, under the peak, you can determine the percentage of those uh, um, cells by looking at the area under the peak. On the right, they have just taken the data from the raw data on the left and graphed it. Um, and so sometimes you'll see that in a figure where they'll say, well, this is the percentage of cells that are apoptotic or sub-G1, G1, S, G2, and M. So again, you can compare um, cells that are in the control cells, well, let's say 50% of these cells are in G1, and the other 50% are either in S, G2, or M, whereas increasing uh, concentrations of this drug um, seem to cause a decrease in the number of cells in S or G2, M, so fewer cells are going through the cell cycle, and more cells are actually apoptotic in this treatment. Um, so those are the types of analyses that people do when they want to look at cell cycle. Um, this type, of, this is called a flow cytometry assay. That's another term for it, or um, a cell cycle analysis. So we'll see this um, in a couple papers uh, throughout the course.